Hey everybody, it's Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. I am a little bit late, so I apologize. I don't know what's going on with my live streaming video that I'd already made, but for some reason I had to scrap that one and start a new live video. So here I am live coming to you from Minnesota, and I'm here with the last video in our Frequently Asked Questions series where I take your frequently asked questions about travel to Egypt and answer them. So the question that I'm going to tackle today is, is Egypt safe for U.S. tourists? Before we talk about safety in Egypt, I want to remind everybody that I'm doing a tour to Egypt this November. It's called the Highlights of Egypt, and you can find the link to watch or to check out the itinerary and to join that trip um, down below in the video description. So let's talk about safety to Egypt. First thing I want to say is when I get asked if Egypt is a safe place for Americans to visit, I always loudly and clearly say yes. I've been going to Egypt since 2012. I lived there for two years and I've never had an instance happen where I felt unsafe or where I was worried about my safety. There are a lot of things that happen that are different in Egypt because it's a very different place from the United States, culturally, religiously. And I'm going to talk about some different categories that people usually ask about in terms of safety. But the overwhelming message I want from this video of when people ask, is Egypt safe for US Americans? Yes, 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 it is safe. I'm going to talk in the next few minutes about the situation in Afghanistan, because I've had several people commenting on videos or sending me emails asking about that. I also want to talk about um, a couple of things to be aware of in Egypt in terms of safety. Um, people having phones snatched out of their hands, for example, stuff that if you're aware of, you don't really need to worry about. Um, I want to talk about scamming because scamming is something that definitely people need to be aware of when they go to Egypt. Although a scam is kind of a waste of your time or money, it doesn't necessarily turn into something that's unsafe usually. Um, I want to talk about some religious concerns people usually have when they go to Egypt and thinking, oh, it's a majority Muslim country. What does that mean for my safety? Um, and I also want to talk about sexual harassment, which is something that everybody should be aware of when they travel to Egypt, but especially female travelers. And Hi, Lamise. Thanks for joining. So let's get started. I've had several people ask me about Afghanistan and if the current instability in Afghanistan means that Egypt is now an unsafe place for people to visit. Afghanistan and Egypt are very, very far apart. There's several places in between those two countries. And even when I was living in Egypt and there was unrest happening in places closer by, like Yemen or like Syria, I never felt any of that stuff impact my feeling of safety in Egypt. So I would say travelers to Egypt don't need to worry about the situation in Afghanistan. It's great to keep track of what's going on in the news and to hear if there's anything more um, escalated that happens. But overall, um, that's not something that should concern somebody about safety. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, little things that might happen in Egypt that I've heard of happening in the past. You don't really need to worry about pickpocketing in Egypt. You don't need to worry about somebody, um, you know, stealing something from you as long as you're leaving things in your locked hotel room or, you know, carrying things on your person. One thing I tell people that they should be aware of, though, is that if you have a cell phone and you're walking along a street and it's busy with cars going by, keep a pretty firm grip on it in your hand because I have heard of a couple of times friends' phones being snatched out of their hands while they're walking on a sidewalk um, from usually somebody on a motorbike. So that is something to be aware of that could happen. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is kind of similar to that. Um, it's something that might not necessarily be dangerous, but it's definitely something that is an annoyance. Scamming. When a lot of people go to Egypt, they go to the pyramids and they get talked into riding a camel and then the person charges them way more money than what they thought they would need to pay. Or they go with somebody to their shop and they tell them it's their sister's birthday and they should buy something so that they can have the money to get their sister a wedding gift. And the stories are endless. The situations are endless. But what I do tell people is that in order to not have your time or your money be wasted. Again, these aren't situations that are dangerous per se. 
but it's always good to travel to Egypt with a local Egyptian guide or with somebody like me who knows the ropes and can see those situations and help you navigate them in a polite way. Rule of thumb, if you are traveling independently, don't trust what anybody is telling you when they're meeting you at a tourist site like the Egyptian Museum or Khana Khalili or the pyramids. And especially, I wouldn't spend time going with somebody to their specific shop or their specific um, place that they work because generally when somebody's leading you off somewhere, when they're finding you in one of those places they know tourists go to, most likely it's going to be a setup for some sort of um, pressure situation for you to make a purchase. So I've got a couple of people who've left some comments. Um, yeah, somebody saying that it's important that I'm talking about my experience from the American perspective. Yeah, I think that a lot of U.S. folks who travel overseas have this perception that different countries don't like Americans or they think that people from the U.S. are this, that, and the other thing. And what I found in Egypt is that people love people from the U.S. for the most part. I usually have folks who are so excited to talk to me about different movies or TV shows or music that they like that comes from the U.S. or ask me questions. A lot of Egyptian people are trying to immigrate to places like the U.S., so they'll ask about what that is like, what life is like in the U.S. So in general, my, pers my perspective as an American is that people are usually really excited, actually, to have me in Egypt and want to talk to me and want to know more. I have another comment. Um, yeah, an Egyptian person saying, you know, relatively, it, it's relative, but saying that it's safe and people are kind and smiling. And yeah, scamming in tourist places is why you need a guide. Yep, I totally agree. Um, Egypt is a very, very, very safe place. Um, I, I talked about people snatching your phone or getting scammed. I mean, none of this stuff is the stuff that could happen to people in the U.S., I feel like. So, I mean, I feel safer in Egypt almost than I feel in some places in the United States. Um, there's a couple more things I want to talk about. Religion and sexual harassment. A lot of people in the U.S., worry about going to a country that has a majority of Muslim people because the narrative that we've heard about people who are Muslim, especially post 9-11, is that they're terrorists or they're dangerous or they don't like Christian people. And none of that could be farther from the truth. Egyptian people, Muslim and Christian, are extremely friendly, extremely welcoming, wonderful, generous, hospitable people. There has been some violence in recent years between Muslims and Christians in Egypt, but it's very, very localized happening in one specific place. And I haven't heard of anything happening in the last four or five years. And it's never been something that has impacted tourists. So that's not something that people need to worry about. In general, Egyptian people are wonderful. You're gonna be very safe and well taken care of in Egypt. The last thing I want to talk about is sexual harassment. This is something that mostly female travelers will need to pay attention to. Male travelers, it's really great to just be aware of it. It's also good, especially if you're traveling with a sister or a girlfriend or a wife or a female friend, so that you can look out for it too and think about ways to help out. I wrote a blog post on this topic interviewing one of my good friends who lived in Cairo while I was living there. And the link to that is below. So you can read about this topic in more detail. But generally speaking, a lot of women who travel to Egypt will experience some form of sexual harassment while they're there, usually in the form of lewd staring or maybe an occasional cat call or a comment in Arabic that you might not understand. And there are ways to try to avoid sexual harassment, although there's never a foolproof way because obviously any sexual harassment is on the fault of the, of the man, of the harasser, the person who's perpetrating um, the harassment. But there are some ways that women can um, try to avoid the, you know, this potential situation. And then there's also mitigation strategies that I share in that article. So that's a way to try to lessen the impact or to try to de-escalate the harassment if it starts to occur. So that article is a great one for people to read to talk more about sexual harassment in Egypt, because that's definitely something that female travelers and just everybody in general should be aware of. 
So in this video, I explained why my overwhelming feeling of is Egypt safe for US tourists is yes, yes, yes. Um, and I talked about a bunch of different things from the situation in Afghanistan down to um, sexual harassment. And I have a comment that I want to address before I sign off. Um, somebody's asking about the dress code in Egypt. So that's a great question. So dress code in Egypt for men, you can get away with wearing um, short sleeves. So like this shirt that I'm wearing right now, short sleeve shirt would be totally fine. You can wear a tank top if you want. People are probably going to stare and make comments at you. But if you don't mind that, then go for it. Um, shorts are not worn super commonly, but they're starting to come in vogue with um, Egyptian, especially younger Egyptian guys. And um, any, any type of shoe you want to wear is acceptable. Um, but generally, if you want to have the least attention to you based on your clothing, I would say long pants and a t-shirt or short sleeve shirt or long sleeve shirt, sweater, if you're going there in the winter. For women, my friend Liz, who contributed to the blog post on sexual harassment, talked about no midriff, no cleavage, no knees, and no shoulders as a kind of a good rule of thumb for female tourists. And I'll let you check out that blog post on sexual harassment to kind of read more about some um, dress code suggestions. And another comment, somebody said sexual harassment is not only in Egypt. Yep, that's 100% true. It can, I mean, sexual harassment happens to women in the US all the time. So it's just something that um, I always tell people about when I talk about safety, because a lot of times folks, um, the sexual harassment that happens in Egypt might be a little bit different than what people are experiencing in the U.S. So I have um, somebody asking about the winter and the excursion that I have coming up in November. So if you are just here to talk about safety, you can go ahead and sign off. I'm going to quick now jump over um, a little bit off topic, but the winter and the excursion in November. Weather is going to be pretty mild. It'll probably be between 60s to 80s degrees Fahrenheit during the day, and then probably in like the low 60s at night. Although we're going over there in like mid-November, so there might even be some days where it's still like in the 80s or 90s during the day. So pretty warm. Um, there shouldn't really be any rain. There's not going to be anything to be aware of, like a dust storm or anything like that. So it's going to be pretty... Um, pretty comfortable weather for sightseeing. That's why I picked the trip um, to be in November because it's a pretty comfortable time of year in terms of weather. So if anybody writes any other questions, I would be happy to address them in a future questions and answer video. Like I said um, at the beginning, this was my final video where I take your questions and answer them every Thursday, but I'm thinking about bringing this topic back maybe once a month doing a live video, just taking the questions that I've been getting and answering them. I appreciate everybody tuning in to my video. I'm Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. I hope to take you to Egypt sometime soon. Thanks for watching.